Hello. Uh, so today we just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the progress that we have been making in how to integrate uh, data into system modeling. Um, uh, and especially now that, uh, that we have provided support for uh, uh, the introduction of trained neural networks and system modeling. Um, so we want to explore some examples and I'm going to show those to you. Um, in case, well, maybe maybe people are already familiar with System Modeler, but in case people are not super familiar with System Modeler, um, System Modeler is, is a very nice tool that uh, that uses uh, physical modeling. Uh, so it, it's it's based in the use of uh, components and connections, and it allows you to get a very nice picture of like a digital twin uh, of an actual real system. Uh, and you can go from like very simple uh, systems like this to like uh, full uh, robotics uh, modeling, uh, which is uh, a lot thanks to the, all the domains that you can cover in system model. You can do electrical modeling, mechanical modeling, thermal modeling, and all those uh, components can interact with each other. Um, so behind all of this structure, there are a lot of uh, differential algebra uh, equations that are doing all the all the work for you. But the idea is that uh, thanks to this language of connections and, and components, you get a much uh, clearer picture of what you are modeling. Um, so now that we have this idea of what 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 we are doing in system modeling, um, the, 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 the natural question is, what are we going to do with data in system modeling? And there are some very obvious ways in which we have already uh, we have already provided support for uh, for the introduction of data in, in in system modeling. So the most the most directly most natural thing to to think about uh, with data is to just uh, pick some uh, data from the real world and create an interpolation from that that you can just use in system modeler. Um, so the, the 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 idea in that case is just very natural. You just uh, pass this data. Uh, 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 to create a component, and then you can use that component in System Modeler uh, as an input, for instance, or any other components that you have in in in, in your modeling uh, libraries. Um, in this case, for instance, a very simple example, a very straightforward example. So we know that Wolfram uh, has access to all kinds of uh, real-world data, and we can, uh, in this case, we can, for instance, pick uh, data from uh, air temperature in my current location. Um, and after cleaning the data a little bit, we can pass it directly to a function called create data system model. And that's just gonna create this component, um, which is directly just an, uh, an interpolation of the data that we have been passed. So it's, it's a very natural interpretation of it. Um, and then afterwards, I can just uh, directly connect this component to whatever things I have in my, in my libraries. So in this particular case, I'm creating um, uh, this kind of model where I'm just passing my uh, outside temperature data. I'm just doing some a little bit of unit conversion and then I'm passing that to a model of uh, of room heating where I'm doing some temperature control. Um, and so I can use directly real world data and test that against uh, my controller in the room. And then I can just uh, plot the results and see how my controller behaves and how the temperature is behaving uh, outside versus inside. So that's a, that's a support that we have provided for a very long time. And that's um, that's kind of the first very natural thing to do with data. Um, but the second thing, the second natural thing to do with data is to just uh, directly to, pro to do some kind of fitting. And you can think of two kinds of fitting in this case. You can do the kind of uh, natural, uh, like uh, fitting into a, a, a traditional a statistical model. Uh, so for instance, you can do, of course, you can just extract some uh, real world data. So in this case, for instance, uh, very on topic, we can extract the value of the of the uh, British pound against the dollar throughout the year. And then you can see the data in a plot. And of course you can uh, uh, create a linear model fit of that data with like the standard uh, Wolfram language uh, tools that we have. So you can do a linear model, you can do a non-linear model fit, a generalized linear model. Um, uh, the output of those uh, 
functions is a fitted model, which uh, in the system modeling functionality, you can just pass to create system model directly. And that's going to create a component that extracts the, the best fit model. And then that, that thing, you cannot just plug it into your components directly, just like uh, previously mentioned. And you can just observe how things behave. So for instance, in this case, I'm plotting um, the data that we originally had. And then we just uh, pass, I'm just I'm not using my, my component in system modeler that has my, my linear model fit. I plot the behavior of that component when it passed just a standard, uh, just constant, just a linear input. And then I see exactly what, what uh, I would expect from a linear model fit. Um, so that's one natural way in which I can work with data and I can just extract the statistical information and pass it to, to system modeler. Um, another way in which we can interact with data is a little more uh, 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 connected to system modeling, which is parameter calibration. So in the uh, uh, for parameter calibration, uh, the idea, so the context for this is, um, let's say that we have a specific model in mind. In this case, this is a, just a, a simple electric motor. And then I want to, Oh, clearly my, my, my motor, is, it has a lot of components, uh, resistance, inductance, et cetera. And I want to adjust a specific parameter values in my model um, so that they um, match some real world data. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm using my, 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 my system model. I'm extracting some real world data uh, from somewhere um, and then this is, a, uh, this is something that we're looking forward to uh, streamline in the future. Uh, so uh, obviously I can just use a function in, in Mathematica, so anything in the, in the side of optimization that we just take, uh, it will just uh, consequentially simulate my model with uh, uh, guesses for my parameter values. And it's just gonna reduce the distance between what the simulation is produced and what the real world data, uh, uh, what, what and, and the real world data. Um, and I just minimize the distance between those two, those two quantities. Uh, but by doing that, I find a couple of parameter values that uh, adjust my, my, my system model in such a way that it matches the, the real world uh, behavior. So now I can just simulate and I can plot the results and I can see how the behavior of the of my of my model matches um, the data that I use for the minimization. Um, so this is a this is kind of a, a workflow that we're very much interested in 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 improve for the users. So this is something that we're looking forward to investigate. But this is another natural way in which you could use data in system modeling. Um, and now for the new thing. Um, so. Right. So, uh, of course, if you if you if you are interested in training uh, more traditional statistical models, you are also interested in, in training the uh, the newer kind of things. So, in 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 the the most basic case that you can use, consider for like a, a use case in of term, of neural networks in system modeling, is well the standard way of thinking of uh, machine learning algorithms. So. You just uh, train a neural net with some uh, with some data, uh, and then use the train neural network uh, to create a, a component from it, just like how we did with the linear fit um, in the previous example. Um, and obviously, now once it lives in the system model world, then you can connect it to how whatever uh, you want to connect it. Um, so for instance, let's go through that example. Uh, here we are actually using some, again, some data that, uh, that is connected to uh, the energy performance of, of uh, residential buildings. So in this case, again, is we are talking about heating. Um, and the standard workflow for machine learning uh, algorithm training is to, well, extract the data, to clean it a little bit, um, to, uh, do some splitting into training and validation. Um, so this is all in, in the standard language of, of machine learning. We're, uh, machine learning. 
Um, then you can pick a specific uh, neural network structure. Uh, you can initialize it. And then you can just use the data, the validation data, and the training data to train your neural network. Uh, this is all well and good. Uh, um, but now what I would like to do is to take my training, my training neural network, and then I'm just going to create a component uh, from that neural network. So again, I just pass it to create system model. Um, and then one option that you can set in, in create system model is uh, generated as a location. So uh, since you are working in the system modeling world, uh, you're probably interested in storing uh, your neural network in a specific, uh, specific file location. So what is happening in the background is that we are taking the train neural network, we're exporting it as an ONX, ONX file, um, and then in system model, we are using, we already have the functionality. So we're using ONNX runtime to run the train and train neural network um, and just consider it as, as, as another component in, in our uh, libraries. Um, so now that we have this, this neural network here, so I can just go to it in, in, in model center. So this is how the icon looks. Uh, internally is just referring uh, the ONNX, um, the location of my ONNX file and specifying the number of inputs and outputs. Uh, but that's just uh, enough to be able to uh, pick it up and then use it uh, wherever I want. So for instance, uh, just like Jan showed in his presentation, I can just use it in a, in a completely, uh, um, in a much bigger model. So I just take my component, I place it here, and then I can, I can interact with all, all the kinds of components that we were mentioning before. So we have uh, some thermal modeling components, some, some thermal inertia, uh, some temperature um, sensors, some radi uh, a radiator component, and then I'm just passing the, using the information that I have already stored in my neural network to simulate and to, be able to use uh, well the real uh, world data and the trained uh, model that I had uh, in my actual model and my modeling environment. Um, yeah, and of course, and I can I can plot now the behavior of my of my um, uh, variables and see how they behave. Um, so this is kind of like the standard, the the very very standard use case of of. Um, um, of machine learning in in um, in well in any environment really, uh, but uh, the one we actually we got we got to talk today about our nice industrial use case that uh, we just finished working on. So we worked here well here in World from Matcore we worked together with the Lin Shopping University and other companies that are not, that are associated to, with the Lin Shopping University. Uh, in a project uh, about uh, the use of machine learning algorithms in, in the prediction of um, uh, substances that are uh, of the, well, in the prediction of the, how much substance is produced uh, in some bioengineering uh, processes. Uh, so the idea is that um, there are a lot of uh, biological processes that are still not easy to uh, model deterministically in, in bioengineering. And this is a world in the, which like uh, a block, a black kind of black box modeling, like uh, the kind of that you could find in the neural network could actually play an important role uh, for prediction. So the idea is that they developed um, a ton, well, they, they worked on um, new measurement devices that were producing different kinds of signals according to the concentration of, of, of substances that they, they wanted for the, the production of drugs and medicaments. Um, and they were they wanted a, a, some way of predicting the amount of, of, uh, of useful substance that they could produce given the measurements that they were uh, making. Um, and the idea is that if, uh, in this particular plot, what I'm, what I'm just showing is, uh, a specific, one of the specific lab uh, equipments that they had, they were producing one of uh, uh, one of these curves that you see here, and the idea that each is that each of these curves corresponds to a different kind of concentration uh, of uh, of the substance that they are interested in. Uh, so the idea is that we should uh, well, 
we are, and we that's what we showed in the work, we are able to use the data stored in these curves to predict the amount of concentration uh, uh, of substances that you can that, that you can use later. And for that, we used a, a neural network, so we worked completely in the so we worked uh, both in, in Mathematica and in system modelers. So we did all the training on neural networks um, in Mathematica. So we did some dimensional reduction of this data. We cleaned it, we trained a neural network. And then the, the advantage of system modeler is that uh, once the component to, corresponding to the neural network was in the world of system modeler, like this one, uh, the thing is that system model is extremely well equipped to connect with all kinds of uh, lab equipment uh, thanks to some libraries that have uh, uh, the kind of uh, connecting protocols that you need with all kinds of equipment uh, like OPC or, uh, or Arduino. Um, so now that, uh, so often what you have in, in, a, in one of those laboratories is that you need a, a way of centralizing all the information and all the data that you're gathering, sometimes in real time. Uh, into a single machine um, and system modeler is the perfect application for that because you can easily connect all those things to system modeler. You can uh, put, put there your trainer or network, uh, use your own, make your own models of your, of your uh, systems uh, and then keep drawing that on real time and keep getting uh, instantaneous information of how well the model is behaving and how much, uh, how well the production of uh, uh, of your medicament is going. Um, so this was kind of an interesting, uh, interesting um, industrial application of this uh, uh, of this work. And now the good thing is that yesterday they told us that uh, this was this paper was approved in the Journal of Analytical Chemistry. So that's uh, that's good news for us. Um, good. Uh, but now let's go into the future. <laughs> so the things that we are looking into uh, working for uh, uh, aspects like in, of neural networks in, in system modeling are generally, uh, well, okay, so the kind of things that you can think of for like in, in, in interesting applications of neural networks in system modeling, two things always come up on top, which are one is the kind of uh, um, fuzzy uh, controllers based on of machine learning algorithms. Uh, that's an aspect in which we want to look into, but the other aspect in which we want to look into is uh, in reinforcement learning, where the idea is, um, again, um, well, similarly, the idea is to, uh, I think I have a better example here, yes. So the idea is that just as the closed systems that uh, Suga showed you, the idea is that uh, the, controller in, the controller in your system could just be uh, a machine learning algorithm. Um, and in the case of reinforcement, lear reinforcement learning, well, you might have already seen some of these videos of like uh, artificial intelligence playing video games. Um, and the idea is very much that in the sense that you want your controller to observe the, the current state of your system uh, and then be able to predict what is the best future move uh, to, to make um, in your model. Um, so we are still exploring the avenues that are available here in reinforcement learning. There are already a, a few uh, good references uh, to check, so these are already in the in the notebook if you want to look at them. But the example that I wanted to show you today is um, is uh, very much connected to system modeling. Uh, so the idea is that well, one of the standard examples, I, I, and I what that was interesting to find out, one of the first examples that people try to work on in in reinforcement learning is the the model of the inverted pendulum. Uh, so. It, that this happens to be also a very standard example in um, um, in in system modeling. So let me just right. So the idea in an in an inverted pendulum is to you have some kind of situation like this. You have some kind of uh, mobile mobile object, uh, some some cart, and then some uh, some pendulum at the top. The idea is that you can uh, uh, push the cart uh, with specific forces, and then the the challenge is to keep the pendulum at the top 
operate for as long as you can. Um, and the idea in, in the often the challenge is to is that you can only affect this push this car with a specific discrete types of forces. So it's not like you can act with any kind of soft uh, continuous force. You can you can only use like a specific pumps uh, uh, to the cart. And the idea is after a specific sampling periods, you you hope to maintain the the pendulum upright for as long as you can. Um, and another so, but we're gonna go beyond that. So another standard example that people use in in system modeling and the one that I want to use here, hopefully if I have enough time, is um, is the the model of the um, ball and beam. So you have um, you have um, just a, a ball standing on top of a beam, and the idea is that in in control. In control systems, uh, the idea is that generally you want to be able to generate a controller such that even if you push the, even if you put, for instance, the ball off center, uh, you want the controller to act in such a way that it uh, goes back and pushes the, the ball back to the center so that it stabilizes again. Um, so that's kind of an extended example, a standard example, and that's the kind of controller that you can generate with all the functionality that we already had. But now we want to do a version of this with reinforcement learning. Um, so very quickly, because I'm kind of running out of time, but the idea is that uh, we we are, we are going to allow ourselves to to bump the beam with discrete, uh, discrete uh, uh, bumps to the beam to see how long we can keep the, the ball on top. Um, and uh, in order to create a controller that actually keeps the ball on top, we're also we are going to train a neural network. The standard procedure to do that is to use actually two neural networks. So one is going to be the actual controller, and one is going to measure the loss uh, for the loss function in the in the in the neural network training. So in this case, we're actually not going to use data that has already been produced. The data is going to come directly from the previous trainings of the neural network that we're training. So this is kind of a recursive uh, process. And the nice thing about this uh, this approach is that it can actually be done in the Wolfram language functionality. So I'm going to skip a little bit of the details because I'm running out of time. But the idea is that um, in the training, um, um, in the training, uh, you pass a function that does the sequential training for sequences of steps and keeps improving the model in such a way that it uh, ideally it minimizes the loss, but um, and, and also increases the reward. So the reward in this case is just the the reward that we're giving the controller for doing the right thing for keeping the ball on the top. Um, so uh, I, I I have the or the neural network also in the files attached for the presentation, but the idea is that we can do the same thing after we have already trained the model. We can pass it to create system model and generate a component with that. Uh, and that's the neural network that I'm using here in this closed loop system uh, um, here. Um, and now this is what, it's, what the system is doing. So I'm extracting the information about the angle and the position of the ball taking some derivatives because I also care about the velocities, then holding the information for a sample period, then passing that information to the controller so that it decides which kind of bump to use on the beam, and then to keep doing that repeatedly. Um, this specific neural network was uh, successful in a couple places and not so successful in other places. So there's still work to be done. Uh, but at least for instance, here we can see an example in which uh, I place the ball off the center, and then it, the neural network tried to actually make some bumps uh, so, such that the ball stayed a little bit longer on the beam than it was expected. Um, then in other cases, it didn't do as well. <laughs> but the, the, the avenue is completely open, uh, and this is uh, something that we're definitely going to want to look into. And that's uh, so all. Thank you. <laughs>